Today we're taking apart the NVIDIA Titan RTX, which we bought for $2,500. So it's a bit cheaper than the Titan V we bought last year, but it's still pretty up there. The good news is it's still got that champagne gold color that goes so well with Jensen's CEO edition Titan Vs previously, uh, and also our GN beer glass, if you want to mix and match there. But this, we need to, to mar the finish, unfortunately, do a little damage to it, take it apart, see what it looks like underneath. And what we need to look at first is the PCB to see if it's the same as the 2080 Ti Founders Edition or if NVIDIA went with something custom for this higher, probably higher power consumption version of the Touring high-end GPU. So today we're doing a teardown of this card. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus store. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our ceramic mugs, critically acclaimed mod mats, or educational video card teardown and PCB anatomy posters that teach the names and placements of all the key PCB components. Learn more at store.gamersnexus.net or click the link below. If you're wondering what's new with this, other than the champagne gold finish like the Titan V, and the GN beer glass. It is, uh, well, that's really it. We need to take it apart to see what else is different because this cooler, it's the same as the Founders Edition cooler that you saw on the 2080 Ti, 2080, 2070, same thing. So nothing different there. They've got the same uh, slot size, the same fin stack, and presumably vapor chamber under that. So not a whole lot is different externally. It really is just the color. Uh, internally, of course, there's a bigger, well, it's it's the 2080 Ti die, at least the size of it. It's just that there are more SMs enabled. So that's really the, the change there, because the die itself should, in theory, be about the same size. It's just that they've got a couple of SMs that are disabled uh, on the 2080 Ti. And this is the full TU-102 GPU, which would be the biggest one we presently know of as being uh, purchasable for, or actually even just possible for the current Turing architecture. Okay, so this begins our journey of taking out a million screws. Uh, fortunately, we're not gonna take out every single screw this time because there are over 70 in these cards. We're just gonna take out enough to get the thing apart and take a look uh, and then if you are planning to do this kind of disassembly yourself, we would advise avoiding taking apart the cooler. That's the part that really sucks, but you don't have to take the cooler apart in order to get to the PCB. You just have to take all these screws out of the back and then the screws out of the IO, and then you expose the PCB at that point. And if you go to store.gamersnexus.net, you can pick up a mod mat like the one I'm working on and more easily track your screw locations. But we're just gonna take apart, take all these screws out, and then we'll jump ahead a little bit. So that's all the small screws for the backplate. Those just secure the backplate. These secure the backplate to the uh, IO slot to the PCB. So those come out next. And the gold isn't chipping, so that's nice, but whatever, not that important. That was the NVLink cover. You've probably seen those in the past. Did I miss a screw? No. Okay. It's pretty similar so far. I feel ripped off. The, why isn't it gold? It's not gold like all the others. So that's, <laughs> that's disappointing. Uh, now we have to take out all these. These, I think these are four millimeter hex is the size of these ones. And it's the exact same assembly as the previous Founders Edition card. So you're not learning anything new here if you saw those. Um, we need to get through the rest of this in order to learn something. 4.0. So these are 4.0 hex in case you need to know that, which you will if you're doing a, a liquid cooling mod. So there's one of these for each of those really tiny screws. This is something I haven't said in a while, but used to say for every one of these types of teardowns, the tiny screws that go into these are extremely fragile. So if you need to reinstall them after disassembly for some reason, then um, do not turn 
past the point at which it uh, it starts first showing resistance because the the head will snap from the screw shaft and then you'll be sad because it'll be stuck in the uh, the hex screw underneath because they just screw into these and it's really easy to break those screws but it's the same ones they've been using since definitely 10 series can't remember if they use them in 9 series there are so many screws we never did figure out why there are so many screws in nvidia's design although people internally have have since made fun of it since we made the video uh, showing how many screws there were. There were we had two parts to the original disassembly video, and that's because we couldn't figure out how to disassemble this thing, the cooler, during the teardown, which was very disappointing for everyone. And the second part, which came out maybe a day or two later, we did figure out uh, how to do it. And the trick was, if you missed it, we took a heat gun to this plate because there's actually a ton of glue holding this thing to the rest of the cooler, and then uh, started. I think we stuck a screwdriver in up under there and popped it off once the glue was was uh, weakened by the heat gun. So lots of screws. Still a lot of screws. Totally unnecessary, although to NVIDIA's credit with a uh, with a vapor chamber design they're using, it does mean that everything is going to be pretty airtight and, and sealed in, in contact. So. That is an upside. These screws on the I.O. I've since learned since our first teardowns. We did about, we did over 10 2080 Ti teardowns when you all sent them in on loan to look at the broken ones. And in that process, I learned that uh, the this, this tiniest screws here are really at risk of stripping. Like, doesn't matter if you use the right size screwdriver. They are just, they're, they're in pretty tight and uh, you just have to apply a lot of force to break the, Loctite, or I don't know if there's lock. Yeah, there's Loctite. So break the Loctite, because um, these will strip easily. So be aware of that as well. Hope this is making people nervous. Just a little nervous. That's that's what I'm hoping it does to them. Steve. Pretty sure that's about what the comments are gonna say right now. Okay, there's the removal of the IO plate, whatever you wanna call it. And now it should disconnect. Yes. Oof, okay, cool. Make sure I didn't bend any pins. Nope, we're good. Okay, cool. So part of the point of this today is so that we can put thermocouples on the components and see how hot they get. We've kind of already done that, but this will allow it, us to do it more. And um, well, we'll talk about, about this more in the next video in the review and the follow-up videos. But what? let's look at the memory choice. This looks like Samsung. Yes. Samsung, and uh, there was some misinformation previously by mostly internet commenters, uh, which was wrong and suggested that Micron versus Samsung impacts or was a, a change made because of the artifacting. That's not true. It's just because NVIDIA brought on multiple suppliers and they'll bring on SK Hynix probably at some point too. Run just based on how much, what uh, is it, Bill Zoid? Tell me. Uh, what, like for, for what's the MOSFET? I forget. This is a 3170. Part. Okay, it's still 3170s. So this, that's what I was, I was trying to confirm. These MOSFETs are 3170s, just like they were on the 2080 Ti. And we still got three phase split off for the memory up here, which is really easily identifiable, uh, primarily because the branding on the chokes does change, but also because I know that's what it is. And then we have another one down there. Yep, still 4591. Um, this one's been through a lot. Don't judge. Uh, is it identical? I'm thinking yes. Aha! There's a very important difference that I've just discovered. You're hearing it here on Gamers Nexus for the first time. You'll notice that the text is upside down on the Titan RTX. 
I didn't pay $2,500 to have upside down text on a minor, m minor inductor on my board. Thank you very much. You can see they did it again here. Guilty of two counts of being rotated. That's, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much the only difference. So yeah, these are, um, these are basically the same. These are the same. It's the same PCB. This is, in fact, same on the back as well. So there you have it. It's a, it's a 2080 Ti is what it is. At least, well, the PCB is. The GPU is clearly different. We should wash that off and take a look at it. Now, if you're wondering about some of this stuff down here, you see that kind of black silicone looking stuff. We talked to some people and it sounds like it's just, well, it depends on who you ask, but um, one of our contacts and, and maybe you, you might know more about this if you do let us know, but that black film surrounding this VRAM is either to do with uh, putting some extra reinforcement where it's the most thermally sensitive, it's at the bottom of the slot, it's not really getting any cooling, that's what one of our contacts suggested. Um, now it could be like a thermal pad grease, but that's not what this is because it's. I mean, it's not. It's not grease. I can feel it. So uh, nothing to be concerned about is is really the main takeaway here. We're not 100% sure why they do it versus not, but our understanding is that they do this in hotter areas that don't have as much uh, airflow or access to cooling. Let's clean off the GPU. Small note: if you're ever cleaning around a GPU like this, don't obsess over getting the paste out around the GPU. It's not gonna hurt anything. And if you try to remove it by sticking like your fingernail in there with a paper towel, chances are you're gonna snag a small capacitor or service mount device and rip it off and cause damage. So generally we, we would advise just, just clean the, the GPU itself, or at least the um, diffusion barrier, which is what it's, is at the top here. So it is a TU-102-400-A1, and the 2080 Ti, if you've forgotten, is a TU-102-300-A, for that's uh, basically like an, a higher bin skew, dash K1-A1. The last A1 there just means revision. It is not significant. Uh, the K1, we're not 100% sure. We had some contacts suggest that it might mean which memory module is missing. And you'll notice that the, there's just a wad of paper towel here. There's no memory module here. It's because it's 11 gigabytes. Uh, this does have an extra module. It's not 12 though, it's 24. Um, and then other than that, the only difference is, is the uh, secondary part of the SKU, 300A, 400. And that's just, it's the same GPU, it's TU-102. It's the same size GPU, it's the same everything. It's just there's a bit more activated, more SMs, you get more cores. And that could come down to fusing things off artificially for product segmentation, sometimes it does. Or it could be because in making these, well, realistically in making these, they had enough of these fail with just a couple SMs not working or something like, or just one SM, whatever, not working. And then they end up uh, down bending it to one of these because why throw it away if you can recover it as a lower end product? So there's your really obvious walkthrough on that. Most of you probably know that already. So that's it though. That's the, uh, the Titan RTX. I think there's nothing really significantly different. So wait a minute. This one is made in Korea and this one is made in Taiwan. I think we're onto something here. I don't know. Maybe they make them in different places, for example. So that's, that's it. That's, that's all there is to it. It's gold and it's a 2080 Ti in every regard except for the part that matters, which is the GPU and the memory around it. But all the rest of it is, is um, pretty familiar to us. So, so that's what you get when you buy one of these uh, really expensive Titan RTX cards. That's the whole thing. So uh, if you knew the Titan, sorry, the 2080 Ti, then probably not that exciting, but we still need to look at performance in a video. We've done about, well, most of the testing so far. 
and, uh, and we have a, a surprise for you as well coming up after the initial review. So make sure you check back for the review. Now, as for the rest of this, the cooler I didn't really mention. That's because it's the same thing as the 20 series coolers. So you've got the sort of Fuji Poly style pads here, and for the inductors, for the VRAM, for the inductors over here, you have the blue goo pads over there. <laughs> and uh, those are just thermal pads as well. They're a little squishy, but um, thermal pads there. It's all pretty standard stuff. We did see alternating thermal pad choice on some 20 series cards. So I'm not sure if they'll do that with this, but it's kind of irrelevant. It's just a different pad supplier. doesn't mean anything. So that's it for this one. Uh, subscribe so you can catch the review of this card. That's the part that will actually matter, apparently. There wasn't anything really special under this $2,500 card. Although I am curious how much of the money went towards the goldening of the design. And you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a mod mat like the one I used in this video for teardown and tracking your screw placement or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.